On this week's edition, we have Project Face Off, the locker room tour, and once a blade, always a blade. We chat with Derek Ulack. Lastly, do you know who Babs is? You better, he's our homegrown hero. Welcome to another edition of Blades TV. I'm Joelle Tomlinson, and this is my wonderful co-host, Kevin Stanfield. And right now, walking with dinosaurs is being set up behind us. No ice down here, but we're looking forward to when it gets back. It's not quite a hockey game, but it will be very soon. We have some exciting news. Kevin, ramp it up. Oh, yeah, it's The Bachelor. <laughs> if you watch The Bachelor, like apparently my friend Kevin does here, Marcus, he's the star of Bachelor in Paradise. He will be visiting October 16th. There's a dinner at Parktown Hotel. Very classy. Mm -hmm. They'll be catching the game, actually, October 17th as well. So you can get tickets for that. Yeah, you can get tickets for that at either the Parktown Hotel or in the Blades office. And uh, for the record, boys, I'm not hyped up about The Bachelor. He might be bringing his fiance along. Lacey? It's going to be a good time. But for now, here's my interview with Nelson Noje. Back only a week from the Winnipeg Jets training camp, Nelson Noje joins me right now. How was it? Uh, it was a great experience. I, uh, I learned a lot while I was down there and just tried to soak everything in. And I can imagine there was quite a bit to soak in. And is it another caliber, like another step up, that kind of training? Yeah, absolutely. The pace of the game's faster and just the way the vets carry themselves on and off the ice is just definitely something to try and take and bring back here when I get back to Saskatoon. And when you were off the ice and you met those vets and you had the opportunity to kind of soak in that part of the game, is that stuff you really think you can apply to the change room here? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to try and try and do it my own way and just see where we can go from there. I like that. Let's also chat about the experience of the training. Is Are the training elements that you got out there stuff you're going to try and bring back here and apply to your game? Yeah, the training that they do there is, you know, there's not too, too too much behind it it's the kind of the same things that we do here and it's just the intensity and the drive that the actual players have themselves so I'm just going to make sure and try and make sure that I have that drive in my game and we'll go from there. Were there any little tips or tricks you were able to pick up and add to your game? Nothing really in specific that I'd be able to pinpoint it was uh, everything that I tried to take in from there is just something that I can keep in the back of my mind and try and carry out every day but uh, at, the, at the end of the day I just tried to take everything that I could Good. Whether the physical or the mental, who was the most inspiring player you met? Uh, there were a couple guys. Uh, TJ Galliardi and Blake Wheeler were definitely guys who kind of stood out in my mind. And a guy like Mark Shifley took me, uh, took me under his wing when I first got there. So it was kind of nice to have guys like that to look up to. And you're back here now. Was that a disappointment for you or was it somewhat expected? At the end of the day, I knew that I was going to be coming back, and it was just a matter of when. So it was a bittersweet feeling coming home. Obviously, I would have liked to have stayed there as long as I could because that's, that's what you wake up every day and inspire to do. So it's, uh, it's nice to be back now and get the season going. It goes without saying you always have something to prove when you're on the ice and you have the scouts wanting to interview you. Do you think you have something even more to prove now that you're back? You know, I try not to put too, too much pressure on myself when I get out on the ice. I, uh, I just play my game and try and stick to that every night so that I can be as successful as I can. Well, my interview portion is over, but Nelson, you've taken a little bit of time out of your own schedule for next question. Next question. Do you have a summer job? And if so, what is that summer job? Uh, I do not have a summer job. I mean, I'll probably have to find one this summer, but uh, <laughs> Probably just going to stick with, you know, hockey schools and directing little kids. Cause That's good. You know, you do it for the kids. Yeah. That's You can't ask for anything more. Have you ever considered being a paper boy? What's a paper boy? You don't know what a paper boy is? No. Dang it. Nice throw. You go around delivering papers to houses. Oh, no, absolutely not. No? No. <laughs> okay, we know where he stands with that. Kind of a tougher question for you, but how do you keep yourself motivated to stay fit throughout the season? Oh, well, you know, um, I like going to the YMCA and playing some squash and keeping myself active in, in different types of ways. Um, swimming, squash, golf, you know, and as, a, as the summer goes on, I like to, to go back to the gym and, you know, and get back at her and, and train full strength. Uh, get ready for the season. That's good. Uh, that's very good. Got uh, your victim to your own mind. Dreams are hopeless aspirations in hopes of coming true. Believe in yourself. The rest is up to me and don't go. Do you have any vacations planned for this summer with friends and family? Uh, no, I live in a pretty nice, pretty nice area, so there's no need for a vacay for me. All right. Well, what do you do in this very nice area of yours that you seem to live in? Uh, I play golf. Uh, go to the beach. 
go boating, just relax. Sounds like a lot of fun. I've heard of this before, but I've never seen it. It's the Flying V, led by Jesse Hall. Hall up the center ice. Hall with it for the Germany Blue Line. Hall What are your plans as a player for next season? Uh, well, you know what, I think it's a big year for us. I think we're going to try and make a playoff push as a team. So um, I think as a team, we're going to need to score some more goals and play better defensively. So, you know, making our game a little more sound uh, in the D zone is going to be really important for us. I couldn't agree more. Thanks, Nick. Now, they promised me it's not as smelly as everyone says it is. I'm going to take the test. Locker room tour just after the break. Welcome back. Well, it was a tough weekend for the Blades with both Brandon and Moose Just squeaking by with W's. Ryan chats with head coach Bob Woods about what went down, some of the new faces we have on the team, and where we plan to go in the future. Well, I think, you know, I definitely think we, we've improved and upgraded in uh, some areas. You know, we had to let some good players go and good people, but uh, in this business, you know, you usually got to give something up to get something back, and uh, we feel in this uh, situation, I think both sides won. Tell me a little bit now going back uh, last week to the to the two games and Brandon and Moose Jaw. I know one four start obviously is not the way you want things to begin here, but would you say there's been improvement uh, despite the the setbacks and culminating in the seven one loss in Moose Jaw on Saturday? Yeah, I think you know you look at the first uh, four games really are still assessments and and really tryouts for guys. You know we've seen guys in practice, we've seen guys in exhibition games, and now we were able to see guys in four regulation games and getting to see them against some pretty good teams as well so we you know for myself at least gave me a better way to assess uh, what we had and what we needed and I think a lot of that went into what happened uh, today yeah and like you said it's been a tryout you got to see your first look in a blade sweater Nick Amendrude, uh 16 year old goaltender acquired last week tell me a little bit about what you saw in his performance obviously for him that's not the way he wants to to have his WHL debut go but Seems like he didn't get a lot of help out there, as you commented on after the game. So what were your thoughts? Well, again, I thought early on he made some really good saves and looked very comfortable in the net. And again, we weren't very good in front of him and left, uh, you know, face some pretty uh, grade A shots, if you want to call it that. But uh, again, there was a couple of tough bounces in the second period there, and I think things started to come un unraveled for him a little bit. So, you know, I wanted to get him out of there before, you know, we did any damage to him. You know, he's a young guy, he's 16 years old, and I, I think he believe he still has a bright future here. And just uh, talking to him after the game, you know, he was not happy with how it went, but you know, was first to come to me and say, "I've got better than that." And and again, to hear that out of a 16-year-old kid, you know, come right up to his coach after that, I thought that was very positive. Was this kind of a good me measuring stick for the team as well? You get the Moose Jaw Warriors, but the Brandon Wheat Kings as well, one of the top teams in the conference. They've performed very well early on in this season. So do you feel like you got a good taste, a good look at what you expect to see throughout the season here? Oh, for sure. You know, again, we got to see, and even Moose Jaw, I think, you know, they got beat 7-1 themselves, but it was just probably one of those nights. And, and we had one of those nights too. I, I thought we were a better team than what we showed in Moose Jaw. And again, sometimes you need one of those. You got to hit that rock bottom. And then again, you just start building it back up. And that's going to be our process right now. And speaking of building, you get the Medicine Hat Tigers, another good team coming up this Friday. Uh, another week of practice heading into this one. What are your thoughts heading into that one? And does the team look ready to you know, snap out of this and get that first win? Well, for sure. And again, it won't be any easy task. You know, Medicine Hat's another good team in this conference and going into their building, which is never easy. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to have our work cut out for us. But again, we like you said, we have this week to kind of clean up some things and we're going to get some new faces in here. And, and uh, you know, I think, uh, again, a lot of positives. You know, it's a tough day. You, you don't like to have to let guys go, but I think they're all for the right reasons and I think for the better of the Blades. Ever heard of East Hastings? It's a neighborhood in British Columbia. Probably not the nicest. Every year, a select number of junior hockey players get the opportunity to go on down there and experience what life is like living on the streets. It's called Project Face Off, and our very own Yuri hopping down there. Well, I'm joined by one of the new acquisitions here on the Saskatoon Blades. He's a local boy, Josh Yurik, also known as Yuri, better known as Yuri, actually. He's about to do Project Faceoff. Tell me a bit about this project, Josh. Uh, well, I fly out to Vancouver, and uh, we're going to head over to East Hastings and take part in the Project Faceoff. And 
we get to see uh, kind of what goes on down there and, and get a better picture of uh, what really happens. Absolutely. Now, East Hastings is kind of an iffy neighborhood. Do you have any idea if you'll be surrounded by other guys, or how will this work? Uh, yeah, I think there's going to be a big uh, crew of us. Obviously, a few of the other guys are coming with me. So, uh, you know, I think it'll be pretty safe, and obviously, you know, there'll be some police officers, I hope, anyway. So, you know, I'm, it'll be fun, I think. Have you seen footage from other teams visiting? Uh, no, I haven't, but uh, one of my friends, uh, Jesse Shinkrook, he went down there and he said it was it was a great experience. Quite the eye-opener. Now, you grew up in Rose Town and, like we said, also in Saskatoon for part of your childhood and upbringing with the Saskatoon Contacts as well. Compare your upbringing there maybe to what you're going to see in Vancouver. Oh, uh, well, obviously, you know, Rose Town isn't the biggest, so... And Saskatoon, I wouldn't say, is really comparable to Vancouver. So, you know, it'll be a little bit different scenery for me, but I'm, I'm looking really forward to it. Absolutely, and quite the trip. Now, why do you think it's important for players like yourself to maybe learn about the less fortunate decisions you can make? Uh, you know, I think uh, what's important is you, you got to see what happens, you know, when you, when, when you don't try and, and you uh, make poor decisions in life. And you don't want to end up in places like that, and it's unfortunate for the people that are. but. It just kind of shows you that, that you really dictate where you end up uh, by how you act and what you do. Absolutely. Well said. Well, that's Yuri Saskatoon Blades, and stay tuned. We'll have more with you after the break. We're joined here now by one of the newest members of the Saskatoon Blades, Sam McKechnie. Sam, first of all, welcome to Saskatoon. And what have the first few days, few hours, I suppose, been like here as a member of the Blades? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, it's a really nice facility, uh, great group of guys, and uh, I'm really excited. Tell me a little bit about uh, your history. Obviously, you're coming to us from the Seattle Thunderbirds. Uh, you've proven yourself to be a goal scorer in the past. What are you kind of going to be bringing to the Blades organization? Yeah, a little history. I started uh, in Lethbridge and then got traded to Seattle last year and uh, and now I'm here in Saskatoon. Um, I'd like to, yeah, I've been known to score goals, but I've also, uh, in Seattle, I played more of a checking role and, uh, you know, I'd uh, like to uh, bring uh, anything I can to help the team out here. What kind of a player are you? Uh, we've seen the highlights, we've seen the footage of you uh, getting getting the job done offensively for sure. Is that kind of your game? Are you an offensive guy or you like to bring a two-way style? What uh, makes Sam McKechnie take out there? Yeah, I'd like uh, to say I'm kind of a two-way player. Uh, some games I'll uh, maybe pot a couple, but uh, as a smaller guy, I like to kind of use uh, my speed and be uh, kind of tenacious on four checks and uh, whatnot. So that's kind of my style of play. So you were telling us off camera that you drove here from Seattle. I'm sure that was a little bit of a trek, but uh, all settled in now. What do you think of your new home, your new digs here in Saskatoon? Yeah, it was definitely a, a long trip. Uh, engine light's been on in my car uh, since Spokane, so uh, I'll have to check that out. But uh, yeah, it's a great facility here. I'm really excited. And meeting some of the group of guys, the coaching staff, training and equipment staff, obviously the dressing room here. What are your what are your first impressions? Yeah, like I said before, uh, it's it's great. Uh, one of the definitely one of the nicest rinks and dressing rooms uh, in the league, and uh, great uh, staff as well. Right on, Th Sam. Thank you so much for your time, and again, welcome to the Blades. Look forward to seeing you out on the ice. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I haven't been here in a, in a couple of years too, so it's it's nice to come back and kind of see the city a little bit. I mean, we only flew in just before the game, so you don't get to see a whole lot, but, uh, you know, it's nice to be back in familiar arena. Kind of familiar in the fact, I mean, 10,000 plus in there. Does that kind of remind you of the days and crowds? Pretty loyal fan base here in Saskatoon. Yeah, they've always been good. I think, um, you know, we had a lot of good teams when I played too, so uh, they were always loyal and they always uh, filled it up pretty good and they're always usually pretty loud too. Yeah, definitely. It was, uh, it was good to be back for sure. I obviously played here quite a bit with PA and, and it's always... Oh, it's fun, fun playing in that building, and uh, especially, uh, especially now being being with an NHL team makes it even more special. What did you think of the crowd here tonight? I mean, Saskatoon, PA, both great fans, but they come out with over 10,000 here tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, uh, pretty sure that's 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 what I expected anyway. So uh, every time we played here, there's always been a pretty pretty good crowd. So uh, I wasn't uh, wasn't really uh, shocked by that. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun playing here for sure. Now that you're competing for a job with the Oilers, how are things going for you at this point in your first training camp? Uh, it's been pretty good. It's been a lot of fun so far. Uh, I've been learning a lot. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff I, I still have to get better at and stuff that I have to learn, but uh, I think that's that's what I'm here for, and I'm trying to, just trying to get better day for day. 
I think being a hometown kid, um, you know, really, really helped my experience um, playing with the Blades. Uh, you know, I grew up as a, as a kid watching the Blades. I'd come to as many Blades games as I could. Um, I had an older brother who went through the WHL, so you know, I knew both the process and uh, and you know how things worked. And um, always grew up a Blades fan, so to be able to throw on the jersey for the first time was was definitely a, a special experience. And uh, for me, um, you know, just the entire organization, the staff. Uh, you know, some of the people that are still here today, some of the people that have moved on that, you know, influenced uh, not only my years here, but, you know, my, my life and my career. Um, and, you know, for me, the, the entire city of Saskatoon, um, you know, embracing uh, the Blades and myself uh, as a hometown kid and a hometown captain was, was unbelievable. And um, for, for me, the city of Saskatoon has, has just shown me tremendous support throughout my entire career. So, um, you know, obviously this was, uh, high up there on my hit list of, of places to bring the cup and you know I'm glad I'm, I'm able to come here today and share it with some of the people that uh, that I'm close with. Um, you know I didn't really didn't really think in my wildest dreams that uh, you know at the end of the year um, you know I'd be coming back here with the Calder Cup so um, you know it was a, an unbelievable year with the Huskies I'm really proud of how we finished up uh, making it to the national championship final and um, obviously getting that call at the end of the year to, to go finish the year with you know, a team uh, that was first in the entire American League at the time, the Texas Stars, was, you know, one of the best phone calls I've ever received. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed the opportunity I had down there. I had the chance to get into a few games and, uh, you know, really feel like a part of the team. Um, so it was obviously pretty exciting to, uh, to win a championship there. I think the, the organization has a very bright future. Um, I mean, you know, the team was very young last year, but definitely showed some promise. And, um, you know, that, that reminds me a lot of my first year. We were a young team. We missed playoffs. Uh, you know, we built off that, kept the same core group, um, had you know, a few minor changes and uh, you know, I think it was two years later we won the division. So um, it's all part of the process in junior hockey of uh, you know, the building and rebuilding and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, the new look organization I think is going to be something that, uh, you know, that helps the team out and helps the city out as well. So it's, uh, it's an exciting time uh, for the Blades organization, it's an exciting time to be an alumni and in my opinion it's an exciting time to be a Blades fan. So really looking forward to see how they do this season. Joelle, I'm so happy! Well, anyway, it was a great look at Derek Hulak and his connection to his hometown. Please stay with us. We have more Blades TV after the break. Well, coming on into the Saskatoon Blades room, I'm joined by former athletic trainer, now the assistant GM, that's Steve Hildebrand, also known as Hilti, or better known as Hilti, correct? Better known as Hilti, yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me here in Welcome Lagerin. to our humble abode. Thank you very much. Now I'm getting the full tour, so let's move on to the main area. You can kind of tell me okay. what we're looking at here. Absolutely. So this is our main dress room area. Um, we built this room, the whole project uh, it was six years ago. Uh, in here, obviously, this is where the guys get dressed, and you know, Coach Woods comes in, gives them a pep talk. Um, one of the, the big features of this room is our main feature wall which is uh, here. Now we have these sliding boards, which uh, was kind of a, uh, it was a unique uh, thing that we put in ourselves um, that uh, it's really worked. Uh, um, the biggest part of it is all the videos actually, all the video cords go through the roof. So when Dean and, and Bob come in to do video, it's actually hooked up to the back and then it just uh, comes up on the TV here. Well, now I'm joined by Bob Woods. Now you are the head coach of the Saskatoon Blades. Welcome to Saskatoon. Welcome back. Thank you. It's Absolutely. good to be back. Absolutely. Well, we're standing in this beautiful dressing room and this is kind of your spot. So tell me the routine of what you do when you're in the dressing room during games and practices. Well, a lot of times like we use these boards and, and you know, we have the lineups on there so everybody knows who they're playing with. You know, usually the blank area here will have our notes for the game. So just keys to the games, keys to the win. Uh, and then on the, these boards, I'll usually put on the power play, you know, formations on the breakout and also in zone. And then we use these boards too when we're getting ready for practice as well. Definitely. What about that pep talk? Is that right here? It happens right here. You know, we do everything, but don't step on the logo. So we, <laughs> I wander around the room a little bit. I'm always trying to make eye, eye contact with as many guys as possible. And as Dino, you know, his job is kind of watch the guys in the room when I'm talking, who's paying attention, who's looking at the floor, and usually uh, you can see some pretty key things. <laughs> Absolutely. And why is it so important to have that open communication in a room like this? Well, again, it's this is our home. Like this is our home away from home, and we spend a lot of time here. 
And again, this is where we're all together. And I, I love the setup of the room because everybody can see everybody. And you get some locker rooms where that's maybe not the case, but I think it's important to look at the guy across from you or the guy next to you and just making sure that he's ready and paying attention. Perfect. Now here's the hot button question. You coached in the NHL. How does it compare, dressing room to Saskatoon Blades? This locker room is NHL caliber. Like wow. there's a lot of key things here that you'll see in a lot of NHL buildings and, and again we're very fortunate to have this setup. Awesome. Now let's move on to these quotes on the wall because I hear you were the inspiration behind them. So maybe explain a bit what this core covenant is and why you thought it was so important to be up here. Well this is kind of the main wall that every guy's going to see and, and the core covenant comes from my time with Bruce and Hershey and it's something that we've had a lot of success and we kind of carried it through everywhere we went. And if you, you read it, it's got a lot of key things in it and it's what we believe in as a group and uh, what are key things and what, what are important to us. So I think if guys live by these things, they'll, they'll have success. So you're saying though the hockey is very important, it's also about the relationships you build on this team. Oh, for sure. You know, again, team is everything. I, I haven't been on a team that's had success unless there was some chemistry and guys that get along and have the same beliefs and are on, on the same page. So this really is the key to what we're trying to do here. Perfect. A wonderful message. Thank you so much for joining me in the dressing room today, Bob. Awesome. Thank nice you very you. much for stopping by. Absolutely. This room itself, we, we traveled all over and I've been in a lot of rooms and, and it wasn't just myself. I mean, I was in charge of the project, but um, you know, this used to be a big open storage area and uh, there was nothing here and we were, uh, the building asked us if we'd like to move here and Mr. Brodsky said, here you go. Like this is, uh, here's this project, go with it. And we had, I think it was ended up 35 different drawings. So when you do that, you have a lot of people involved. There's a lot of things involved. Um, I think the biggest thing for us was, for me anyways, was making sure the people that knew whether it was electrical, whether it was plumbing, I'm not an expert in it, so people that knew the building, I brought them in to go over the plans to see what worked for them and for us as well. So I think that part of it made it you know, a lot easier for everybody. The dress room part, and as we show, we'll show further, um, it, was a, it was a combined effort of all the rooms we've all been in and what we liked and didn't like, and we kind of got to make it our own. So it was a really cool thing that we kind of got to do. It was time consuming, but it was a, it was a really cool project. So, um, you know, all these stalls, we have 26 stalls in the room. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it was, uh, the whole concept of the room was an open, uh, free-flowing dress room. Uh, that was our main goal, and I really believe we, we, we achieved that goal. Um, I know we've had a lot of NHL teams come through here with the NHL games. Uh, they just can't believe that this is a junior hockey rink and some saying that this is better than their practice facility. So <laughs> that made me feel really good about the project. Obviously with the World Juniors here, we had Team Canada in here and uh, they were just thrilled to death about uh, everything that was going on. Absolutely. And with us move into the new room a few years back, do you think team morale was also boosted by this? Absolutely. I, I think when you walk into something like this, it's like, wow, this is like a pro type room and uh, they feel very good as soon as they come here. So uh, I think anyone we've traded for, or anyone we brought in, our young guys, when they come in and even their parents and family, it's for us it's a selling point to them and that we're going to take care of them. This is the way we operate and this is the way we are and we're going to take care of them for sure. And you said individual too because they each have their own stalls and what comes in each of the separate stalls? So everyone has kind of their own personal shelf as you can see. Uh, they have, uh, we have shower bags for them um, and then all their equipments, you know, gloves, pants, helmet. Uh, underneath here we have the, uh, you know, kind of the, this is kind of where everything gets hidden, but uh, all their bags and their stuff for the road goes, uh, goes underneath. Now we also have air vents that are underneath which help create airflow. Necessary. So, so we don't have <laughs> as many smelling things as possible, but uh, you know, it's something that, uh, again, it was just when we were building the intricacies of the room, you have to go through every detail. And we feel uh, after this whole thing, you always go back after a project, go, what could we do differently? There's not many things. We feel really comfortable uh, about the way things went. You know what, it looks great, it's organized, it doesn't smell too bad either. Were there any other big features you wanted to make sure you had with this room? Uh, you know what, no, like I think the, you know, the room speaks for itself. I, I think now being this is a six year, uh, making sure that uh, it's kept clean and, and Graham Spike Water equipment manager does an unreal job. Uh, he's this room every day looks like this you know this is the way it is and uh, it's an expectation we have as an organization. Um, you know I guess I could tell you a little funny story about the logo. We ended up having uh, the designer who did the logo when he first came here same logo and everything but he felt that the logo should look the same color as the stalls. So this was actually a tan color the first logo was ever made. 
um, I promptly called him and said, this is wrong. Um, unfortunately for him, these logos don't, aren't cheap. And uh, you know what, uh, they had to change it on their dime. And, and uh, they, we had all the backup anyways to say, hey, this is the colors we wanted. But uh, it was kind of a, it was a funny thing when it came in. I was like, oh my God, this is wrong. And we got to fix this right away. So, because this was like the finding, the kind of the finishing touches on the room, putting the logo in the middle. Draws it all together. Right. And, and you know, the logo on practice days is covered. Uh, so what happens is, you know, no one walks on it and, you know, it's a $50 fine if you walk on it. And uh, we've had some people have to pay that. So, you know, never walk on a logo in a dress shirt. Oh, wow. I came pretty close earlier, actually. So $50. you're lucky. I'm lucky. lucky I avoided that <laughs> fine. Well, yes. let's move on to separate parts of the dressing room because this is only one section, right? Absolutely. So this is our uh, this is our equipment area. Uh, we went with the half wall here, which is kind of a it's cool, unique, and different. I mean, again, it goes back to what we were trying to create with the openness and the flow. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of players, will just if they need anything fixed, just kind of hand it over the counter, almost like a sports shop type thing, you know. So uh, we've created a lot of storage with uh, with the drawers, and uh, it really helps keep I think everything nice and neat and clean. Uh, Spike's area here is. Uh, got his big sewing machine along with his little sewing machine, which he does great extensive work on. Uh, he's one of the best in our league and i um, obviously working with him for a long time. He's, uh, he's a great man and he does a great job. And it, this area, again, was created to have some openness and flow and you can kind of see everything that's going on and um, it really, it really kind of turned out better than we thought. Um, we did steal the half wall idea uh, from the Edmonton Oilers, the way they built when they built their new room uh, right now. So. It was just something that we really liked and, and it really helped create what we were looking for. Oh, definitely. So. And probably rapport between Spike and the teammates as well. Yeah, absolutely. There's not a wall there and, you know, every everyone walks through here. It's a it's a high traffic area. So whether it's saying hi or how's it going or, hey, do you mind doing this? It's, it makes it a lot easier for him to communicate to players and coaches alike. So Definitely. And what are some of those common issues that maybe one of the Saskatoon Blades would have to come and use the half wall? Uh, you know what? Mostly, most of the time, it's just little things. You know, at the start of the year now, it's like, hey, you know, I need a different size helmet. I need this. Uh, could you sew this? You know, do you mind doing that? Like, it's, it's really kind of a lot of little things that, you know, we try and make sure we've got everything covered, but it doesn't always happen that way. So it, that way it works out really well. Okay, perfect. Well, we're almost done, but we do have one more room. It's very important. That's the storage room. Yes, and you know what? This storage room is uh, what we call our mini sports store. Um, we obviously run a very big budget, and uh, you know it's something that we want to make sure that the players are taken care of and, and in the right fashion. Great. So it's, uh, again, it's kind of jam-packed right now. Start of the season is always, uh, is always a tough time of year for storage because you have all this stuff, and to try and make sure we got enough area. When we built this, as you can tell, we were like, wow, this is great. We have all this storage. <laughs> and now cool. and now we're to a point where we actually have storage bins within the facility to just make sure we got enough room for everything. So we kind of are at a point where we pick and choose what we need in here and what we need to stay in the storage bin. So, but it's, uh, again, it's, it's a great storage area. We have a lot of faith in the system. So what can we find here? We can have shin pads, shoulder shin pads, pads. Shin pads, shoulder pads, pants, sticks, uh, helmet, gloves. We have all the new uh, new, uh, new Under Armour shoes uh, for, the, for the season for our players. Uh, we have base layer stuff, uh, visors. Uh, all these here are all the trunks for uh, our uh, road games that are stored in here. Um, all sets of jerseys are in here, so practice game jerseys. Uh, we obviously run four sets with uh, right now, um, so it's uh, we have a lot going on up top. We have all our our new seats that are in, um, so it's very complex. And as you can tell, everything's marked very nicely. And uh, again, Spike does a great job keeping everything organized. Perfect. It's a hockey hoarder's dream. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> All right, we're coming back into the main area of the dressing room. Thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. Showing me what goes on in the Sassine Blaze. Is there anything you wanted to add about the locker room? No, I think, you know, the biggest thing is, is an area, you know, that we feel it's, it needs to be comfortable for the players to come into. And they're here so much, we want to make sure that every day they come in, it's, it's a good day for them. Um, all the quotes you see on the wall, I think it's, it's something that they read every day, they look at and uh, we want them to feel happy and be a big part of this hockey club. And uh, that's a, this is just one little thing that adds to that whole. Absolutely, it's that blue home away from home. Absolutely. All right, well, thanks so much, Hilton. Thank you, have Appreciate a Appreciate it.
Well, I love it. I mean, I love it. Uh, my home's at Emma Lake. I've been coming home to Saskatchewan for 21 straight years. Uh, I like the people here. And they help me grow uh, with family and, uh, you know, build a foundation for my life. I'm trying to do the same for my kids, and uh, we love it here. It's not skill, it's will. And every dayers find a way to get it done. Well, you know, it's interesting. Tom Meldrum, my Bantam coach, my midget coach, was here this morning. And, 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 you know, that's what it's about. It's about people having an influence on you in your life. The reason you play sport is to have teammates, to be involved, to get life lessons. And obviously, Tom was a great coach and a great man. And I'm thrilled that he was here today. And, and Saskatoon hockey's why I've had success and a big part of things. So fantastic. Well, I just think you got yourself a great coach. Uh, you know, Brodsky's did a phenomenal job here for the city. Now we got new ownership here, uh, changing direction. I, you know, to me, coaching young guys is a lot of fun. The Western Hockey League is a great, great league. It's just NHL light. Uh, there's a great product. It's hard to win. They got to build a program. It starts with scouting. You need players to have success. The culture's got to be right, and they've got to do it right if they're going to lead those young guys. So. Uh, you know, to me, when you're coming to a new spot and you're starting over, is it's about creating a culture that demands uh, success and has an accountability to it and treats people right. And if you do those things in the end, your players will be good. Well, I think I get some extra credit for holding this pose while in this footwear. But the reason, Kevin, why are we holding the tree pose right now? Do I get extra credit? I don't do this often. Wait for it. Nope, totally fine. Moksha yoga with the blades. That's coming up next week. We'll see you then.